mean? Right, so the ease of access simply refers to how easy it is for someone to open and interact with digital resources. Any digital resources success lives and dies with the ability for someone to access the resource. If it's difficult for somebody to open up a digital resource or online resource, they're not going to worry with it. So you could have spent many hours designing the most beautiful online or digital resource and nobody's going to use it. Students have grown used to the instant gratification they get on social media platforms. These successful platforms all have one thing in common. It is always quick and easy to access content on these platforms. TikTok, quick, quick. You see them in the quad, busy dancing, doing all those funny things. And then the next minute it's on the internet. Those Facebook lives, that is just such a horrible thing at the moment where they record you and it's on the internet. Quick, quick. That's why they use these things. Teachers must ensure that the resources they share, whether they own or source from somewhere, are easy for a learner to access. So that is what ease of access is. Learners must be able to find the resource that you are sharing easily. Right, now imagine you have to type this link into your phone browser for a very important subject support meeting, right? So your are creating interactive resources easy. So say for instance, you have created a PowerPoint and the learners are watching the PowerPoint or going through it on their own, then you can add these QR codes, making it interactive. Once you created the activity, it will save you time. So you would be able to use that activity forever. Unless you now have to change your syllabus or you feel you want to add to it. It is something that you will always have available for the learners. So you don't have to recreate anything. It makes learning fun. Kids love their phones. So anything that involves phones, they trust me they will it will be fun for them and then it promotes self-directed learning and put learners in charge of their own learning i will show you an example of where i've used or tried to use self-directed learning through using qr codes so when should i use a qr code my answer is anytime but okay let's rather not go there when should you use a QR code? When you're going to have hard copies of a document and want to add access to web-based content. So you have your page, but you want learners to access a YouTube video. So you have your QR code also on that page. They scan it and they're able to access the video. When you want to add activities or breakaway options in your presentation, maybe there's a poll, or some fun activity that you also want them to do that's online. When you are creating handouts with interactive elements, similar to this part here, when you want to make online resources easily accessible on paper. So again, instead of using a very long link, you make it easily accessible to the learners by just using the phone. Because we know in the South African context, the vast majority of learners do not have access to laptops or desktops. So the school might have computer labs, yes, but the majority of learners will use a mobile device when accessing digital content. So it's therefore crucial for teachers to consider how the content, how the content that they want to share is displayed and how easily accessible it would be for them using a mobile device. So QR codes only work when a person has a way to scan them. As I indicated, you're using the mobile phone, so your mobile phone must have a QR reader. 
And in order to access the resources, a mobile device is used. So it could be a tablet, it could be a phone, which most of our learners have access to. Right, so what we have here is examples of how QR codes are used to enhance learning. So this page here that I have is a grade 12 geography. It's a case study, sorry, no, it's not the, the geography one. It's a case study on South African designer addressing socio-cultural issues. And what you notice is this was a handout. So the teacher added QR codes to these online resources. So there's a long link for the URL. And by adding this QR codes, the learners would easily access these YouTube videos. If I look on this side, this school used QR codes and Bitly in an attempt to do online screening. So all the learners do is they scan the code and they are able to register that yes, I am on school. Very cute idea. Then what I did for sequences and series, um, with sequences and any actually any subject, you have your level one, level two, level three, level four questions. So this is where I tried self-directed learning. So I printed out QR codes. This is sequences and series. So here you have level one and level two type questions. And then each side would have like maybe just level one questions. This is level two questions. And this one has all four type questions. So the learners could select this cube and scan it and then select what level of question they would like to do. So it was self-directed in that they could choose the type of questions that they wanted to do. And by hopefully doing this, they wouldn't stay at level one and two, that they would actually advance to eventually cover level one, level two, level three, and level four type questions. Then another thing that our school decided to do, the maths department, we all created little booklets. So this is Algebra Booklet 1. And then the exercise, we would create the memos of these exercises. And then the kids could scan it to see the answers, or they could use the link to check the answers. So it made it easier for us as teachers to not every time have to do every last exercise the kids themselves could access the memo at their own time. And this was also obviously due to COVID that we decided as a team to create something like this. Okay. Then I saw this on the internet and I thought it was a very cute idea. It's a tree. <laughs> so the people, the, or the parents, could scan these QR codes and would give them more information about the school. So what you do with the QR code is all up to your imagination and your creativity. It's a very valuable tool for creating content that are easily accessible to all. Right, so there are many free QR generators on the internet. You just have to type in QR code into the Google search button and you'd find many different QR code generators. And they're free. You don't have to pay anything. So there's QR code monkey. Very easy to use. There's QR code generator. Also very simple and easy to use. And then we also have the free QR code generator. Most of them are extremely easy to use. It's self-explanatory. You don't have to like, oh my goodness, I don't know what's going on here. It is straightforward, easy. Okay, but we are going to do that and we are all going to practice it as well. Because at the end of this session, we are all north, south, East, Central and West, we are, the West is most now the extras, we are all going to be able to do QR codes and bitlies and we are all going to be able to import it into a document. 
Right. So I have my link. So I'm going to paste it here. Okay. Paste it. So there's my long link. I am going to leave it as is. If I want to change the custom design, they are some pretty cute and they've got frames. Okay, so it's up to you what you want to do. If you just want a plain and simple QR code, it's all up to you what you would like. So I'm just going to keep it plain and simple and I'm going to say create the QR code. Right, and now I'm going to download it as a PNG. It's important that you know where your QR code is going to be downloaded to. So in my case, this is the file where it's going. If you want to create a new folder for it, so I'm going to create a new folder and it is for the training. You have to be very organized with this stuff. Shortener. So when do we use a link shortener? Let me just do this slide. Sorry, guys. Right. So we have this. So by using a link shortener, we can exactly see what it is about. Okay. So when to use a link shortener? When creating links that people might need to manually retype, just like previously when I showed you that very, very long link that was for an online meeting, you know, nobody would be able to retype that manually. Another reason when to use a link shortener is when the links are very long and you prefer to have a shorter link displayed or when you want to track activity of a specific link. Right, most applications allow you to highlight text and insert a link. When you do this, a link shortener isn't necessary. Okay, sometimes you don't have to use it. But when you want to make it more um, descriptive or customized, then it does help. Right. So once again, there are many shortness out there. There's many link shortness out there. And you don't, you can use whatever you want. It's going to do exactly the same thing. My favorite one is Bitly. It's the most widely used shortener. You've probably seen it a lot, Bitly dot whatever. So it is best functionality. It's free. Does have some limitations, and one disadvantage is that many custom backends have been used. So, so if for instance you wanted to have like um, Algebra One as your backend, it most probably have been used already. So it has to be very unique for the backend to be able to be customized. Okay, then the other one is tinyurl.com. Okay, I think you've probably seen that also. But because it's an older one, it doesn't have some of the functionalities that the newer ones have. And then in the middle, we have bit.do. And bit.do offers a QR code, a QR code version of the link, as well as a link shortener, which makes it a two-in-one. Very, very nice as well to use. Right, I just wanted to indicate that when you use BitDo or Bitly, you have to register first. So this is for BitDo. As you can see, um, you put in your username, you have a password. Now with a password, for, for your security, your password must contain at least eight characters, a number, an uppercase, a lowercase, and one special character, such as a dot, I, we can, I can never get to this word. So, and, <laughs> and the dollar sign. Okay. So, when you type in your password, because we normally just use letters, then it will say, nope. So, just remember that you also have to use one of these special characteristics. Okay. Or special characters. So, that is what you'd have to do to sign up for Bitu as well as for Bitly. So this is Bitly. 
this is how to create a bit.ly. So if this is the landing page, you can add a title, what, what the code is actually about, what the bit.ly is for. Here you can customize the back of. Now they will give you a generic one, okay? One that they give you, which is still very much easier to type in than those very long URLs. But you can also customize this back of if it's not if it's not been used already. Okay. So you type or paste your long URL here, and then Bitly will create the shortened version of it okay so let's practice that let's try using bitly close these ones okay so i'm gonna go back to my um drive right so now i'm going to create a bitly for it so i right click and I say get link. And I want anyone with the link to view it. So that is correct there. So when the learners click on the link or they type in the link, they would be able to access this resource. So I say copy link. And I'm going to go to bit.ly. Right, so I type in bit.ly.com. Right. So you can see, well, the Lakara is a free account. So you're going to have to register for an account. I click on the word create. And I paste the long URL in this box. Okay. I don't worry about the rest. And I say create. Right. So a title, just so I know what it is maybe about. So it's workbook one, and this is exercise two. Right. So here I can customize the back off, or I can leave it as is. Because 3T4MW, small wr, is easy to type into a phone. So I'm going to try and see if I can get something else. Workbook one. And exercise two. Let's see if it will take it. And I say save. Cool. The link has been edited. So now you can see there is the link. Workbook one, exercise two. So I copy the link. I created my link shortener. And I'm going to select my handout. Select where I want to paste it. Put it there. Right, so now, because it's a link, if I paste it, that's not a link, right? We all know by now, oopsie, that it must look like this. If your link does not have, looks like a link, so if I press Control, I'm supposed to, a hand. If I press the control button, I must see a hand. If you don't see that, you can also say insert link and then it will show because you copied the link, it will show you. Okay, that's one way of doing it. Or you can right click. Okay, I don't, it's not the, it's already a link, so it's. It's not going to show. So the easiest way is insert link and you just select the link that you've copied. And there you have your link. There you have your link shortener. Okay. So when the learners are unable to scan the code, they can type this link into the mobile and again, they will be able to see the video that you posted. Easy deasy. So you need to have the link that you want to share. You either put it in Bitdo or Bitly, and then you just copy it onto the resource or the handout that you want to give the learners. So let's practice that. Let's see how we go about that. 